Hello, and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Uh, in this section, we're going to solve this circuit using Kirchhoff's Current Law and Voltage Law. And it's a complicated looking circuit, but really there's only one thing that you need to find in this circuit to get the answer, and that is, what is the value of R, this resistor R? In other words, we build the circuit with a source, we put all these circuits everywhere here, we know that there's four amps flowing through this guy, what value of R will make this circuit basically true? Um, because if you choose the wrong value of R, basically you're not going to get four amps here. That's sort of the bottom line. So since you're given that and you're given everything else, what value of R is true? So this is just like any other problem in science, right? You write some equations, you have an unknown value, um, and you try to find it. Now the other thing is, just like all other science problems, you don't know how to get to the answer when you first start. So just forget about trying to map it out. I mean, even I don't really know. I even, I even solved it right here on my paper. I have to kind of go step by step through it to see. So the first thing you want to do is scan your problem, especially when you're given a current or given some voltage or given something known. You want to look at that and see if that can help you because as I said before, you can brute force this thing. You can write loop equations everywhere and you can write node equations everywhere. It's legal. And you can solve the giant thing with the matrix and it may be a little ugly, but you can do everything. right? So in this case though, try to see if there's some way we can so circumvent this stuff. But before we do that, we need to do some labeling because we know ultimately we're going to need to find the, um, the resistor value there. So some sort of way through some, some equations that we solve, we're going to be able to find this guy. So we need to label some current so that we can write our loop equations and our voltage, voltage equations. So for no particular reason, let's solve, write this guy. We're going to call it I sub 1. Uh, we'll call this guy here I sub 2. We know the 4 amps is coming here. It's going to split like this. So I1, I2, okay, there you go. I1 continues up this way. Now when the current hits this node here, most likely some's going to come down here. So we'll call it I sub 3. And then when we get here, you're going to get a junction of current here. We'll call this I sub 4. And let's just see what we need to find. I mean, I don't really know. And we also don't know if any of these current directions are correct. But now we have all of the... Basically, we have all of the current legs labeled. The only one we really don't have labeled is this one. Now, you could put I sub 5 here if you want, but we don't, we're not trying to find the power in the source. We're not trying to find anything to do with the source. So leave it off. See if you need it later. But I know for sure we're going to be writing loops up here and loops down here and everywhere. So I know we're going to need to know the current through all this junk over here. That's why I'm, I'm labeling it that way. But if it makes you feel more comfortable, label this. See if you need it. It's okay. Now, we try to look and see if we can utilize the fact that we know this current to our advantage. Um, so we, we, when we start first thinking about it, we do a, let's just think about it for a second. If we write a loop equation here, this is going to be a number, IR. This will be a number, IR. If we go this direction, we don't know what I2 is, so this is going to be an unknown. When we get back up here, we don't know what any of this is, so that's going to be an unknown. So that loop is valid, it's just not in, 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 tantalizing for us. But if we go and take, for instance, this direction, let's go through the source. This is a voltage drop that's known, right? Then we go through here. This is known because we know the current. We go through here. This is known. Now, if we come found through the bottom, we don't know I1, but it's IR. We come through here. This is the same current, so it's IR. And then we go back to the source. So by scanning the problem, we figured out a loop equation that only involves one variable, I1. Because this is known, this is known, this is known. Both of these resistors are going to involve I sub 1, IR, IR, right? When we get back around, we're done. So 